So before anything else, let me introduce to the topical workbook for computer science 2210478. This is the workbook one for for paper one, basically computer systems. And as you can see from the table of contents, I've included questions on each and every subtopic from the syllabus, along with the mark scheme. And these are some of the actual questions, actual pages, uh, as a preview from the workbook. Section 1.1, 1.3, 2.2, 3.2, 2, 5.3 Cybersecurity and Artificial Intelligence. This is just to show you a glimpse of what type of questions are included in the workbook. There are many, many, many more questions where these come from and around 18 to 20 questions on an average are included for each and every topic. A must buy if you want to boost your grade. Similar to the paper one workbook, I have designed a paper workbook for paper two as well. This is for algorithm programming and logic uh, for CIEs either 2210 or 0478 GCE or IGCSE computer science. As you can see, it contains questions on every subsection of the syllabus content for paper two along with the mark scheme so you can understand each and every question each and every um, algorithm these are some of the few pages from the workbook just to give you a glimpse of what type of questions are included as you can see this is 7.1 this is 7.7 8.3 and section 10 boolean logic so um, a lot more questions are included in the workbook a must buy if you want to have a very good score in your cambridge examination order now assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh welcome to another physics lecture so we were discussing section number six six point one to be exact and this is part two of section number six point one earth and the solar system so we discussed about the earth the sun and uh, the moon and the seasons now we are going to start with the second half of section 6.1 that is the solar system the solar system consists of sun at its center as the name suggests its solar system and uh, it has eight planets revolving around it some of those planets have their own natural satellites which are also known as moons uh, some of them don't have the solar system also consists of around 2000 in fact more than 2000 dwarf planets most of the dwarf planets lie beyond Neptune such as Pluto the most uh, well known of them is Pluto and uh, they orbit Sun from a very great distance Th often these dwarf planets are known as TNOs trans Neptunian objects gravitational pull of a planet is strong enough to pull in all nearby objects except its own natural satellites due to the balance of gravity between a natural satellite and the planet itself the uh, moon or the natural satellite don't just come barging in and crash with the actual planet Whereas gravitational force of a dwarf planet is not strong enough to pull any nearby objects. That is one of the main difference between a planet and a dwarf planet. The eight planets in our solar system currently are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars. These four are known as the inner planets, whereas Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune are known as the outer planet and uh, they are mostly gas giants. Satellites. These can be natural such as the moons or they can be artificial. Uh, the man-made objects which are uh, made in order to orbit a celestial object or a planet. For example, the International Space Station or the James Webb Telescope, etc. The asteroids and comets. Asteroids are pieces of rock of various sizes, mostly found in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Asteroids have same density as inner planets. If they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they burn up due to the friction between Earth's atmosphere and the 
asteroid's body and they fall to earth as meteor uh, meteors or shooting stars the largest asteroid ceres is classified as a dwarf planet as well they are presently classified as minor planets means the asteroids are currently classified as minor planets and uh, for these are supposed to be objects orbiting a star that does not have a large enough mass or gravity to have pulled in uh, pulled it into a circular shape or a spherical shape they are ra rather irregular asteroids classified as dwarf planets are big enough to have obtained a spherical shape but aren't strong enough to pull in nearby debris or nearby objects the uh, so there are two types of asteroids one which are labeled as minor planets and the others which are labeled as dwarf planets dwarf planets are spherical in shape whereas minor planets are irregular in shape comets consist of dust embedded in ice made from water and meth methane gas and are sometimes called dirty snowballs as well as they contain a lot of dust particles ice and methane gas their density is similar to the outer planets the gas giants and they orbit the sun in highly elliptical orbits and are much closer to it at some times than the others they do not remain at the same distance from the sun throughout their orbit they return to the inner solar system at a regular intervals but in many cases these intervals are very long they usually approach the sun after many decades on approaching the sun the dust and gas are blown backward by radiation and by heat uh, from the sun and the comet develops a bright head and a long tail pointing away from the sun that hence they are often known as the shooting stars or the tailed stars as well for example a very famous comet is the halley's comet that uh, typically returns after every 76 years it is to be noted that the sun possesses around 99 percent of the total mass in our solar system in fact more than 99 percent gravitational field strength of a planet the strength of gravity on a certain planet would determine an object's weight on that planet and obviously we have discussed that in our section one as well remember that weight is the force acting on an object due to the gravitational pull a planet's gravitational field strength at its surface depends on its mass and its and is near, nearly uniform across its surface the strength of gravitational field decreases as the distance from the surf planet increases planets having strong gravitational field attract nearby mass with a very strong gravitational force and that's that mass usually comes down crushing in form of a meteor shower because of weight objects stay firmly on ground of a planet objects will always fall towards the ground they won't randomly float away in the air and satellites would keep on or in uh, would keep on revolving around a planet in stable orbits here is the data for different planets this is just for your knowledge the examiner does not uh, require you to learn all these values this is just to give you an idea of how um, what you can how uh, the different conditions differ on different planets a planet's year or the orbital time increases with the distance from the sun whereas the orbit this is due to as uh, the distance between a planet and the sun increases the sun's the gravitational pull acting on it also decreases which causes its uh, speed the average orbital speed to be lowered down hence it takes more time to complete its orbit around the sun as it has lower speed and has more distance to cover for example jupiter travels much more slowly than mercury 
as you can see mercury completes its uh, orbit around the sun in just 88 days whereas jupiter takes 11.9 years surface temperature also decreases mark uh, mark markedly a wet distance from the sun however we do have one ex exception as you can see uh, the surface temperature of Venus is ex exceptionally high this is due to the special atmosphere of Venus which is composed mostly of uh, carbon dioxide acting as a greenhouse gas trapping in heat hence this is very 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 ho extremely hot due to its dense atmosphere of carbon dioxide okay so basically these con uh, the conditions on a planet the surface temperature the density etc are sub the surface gravity these are supposed to be known b why because if you are sending uh, a space probe or in future if you would be sending some uh, human astronauts to a planet or a moon some other planets moon or our own you need to know these three fourth and the amount of radiation the presence of atmosphere these things you are supposed to know before you send either manned or unmanned space probes toward a certain planet so you can uh, prepare yourself or your uh, ro space rover accordingly gravity and planetary motion to keep a body moving in a circular path requires centripetal force acting towards the center of the circle and we studied that in our circular motion as well uh, so you need to recall those concepts from our previous lectures for planets dwarf planets and asteroids it is the force of gravity between the sun and that object which provides the necessary centripetal force again you have to remember that more than 99 percent mass of the solar system is concentrated in the sun so it exerts an exceptionally high amount of gravitational attraction towards all the objects this strength decreases with distance so the further a planet is away from the sun the weaker the centripetal force would be acting on it that is the biggest cause why lower orbit uh, why uh, such planets which are far away from the sun have lower orbital speed and longer orbital periods moon is kept in a circular orbit around a planet by the gravity between it and that planet and uh, the distance between the moon and the planet uh, and the gravitational pull of both the planet and the moon such as our planet earth and our moon is what causes them to form a stable orbit and that uh, this distance and the, the force of attraction determines what how much time would the moon take to complete one revolution around its planet orbits of non planets and conservation of energy comets move in an elliptical but stable orbit around the sun at non uniform speed their speed at a given point depends upon their distance from the sun to maintain a stable orbit the radius must change if the comet's orbital speed changes as the comet approaches the sun the radius of the orbit decreases and orbital speed increases due to the sun's strong gravitational pull as the comet travels further away from the sun the radius of the orbit increases and its speed decreases <coughs> due to a weaker gravitational pull from from the sun throughout the orbit the gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy of the comet changes to conserve the overall energy involved as you know energy cannot be created nor destroyed but it uh, can change from one form to another form plus another thing inside any stable system the overall energy con conservation uh, has to be preserved as the comet approaches the sun it loses gpe and uh, the gains kinetic energy or ke which causes it to speed up this results in a slingshot effect hurling the comet back towards the outer space 
as the comet moves away from the sun it gains its gpe and loses its kinetic energy slowing its speed down eventually it falls back towards the sun once more forming a stable orbit in an elliptical way that's all you need to know that's all the theory you need for section 6.1 so now let's look at some example questions the orbit around the sun of a comet is not circular the distance between sun and the comet varies as shown where in the orbit is the speed of the comet greatest and where it is smallest obviously <coughs> a comet as we just learned above would uh, the speed would be greatest when it would be close to the sun and the speed would be uh, the speed would be smallest when it is farther away from the sun so at p it should be smallest and at r it should be greater so speed greatest at r is smallest at p and yes the answer is d <coughs> the solar system contains the sun um, planets moon asteroid and comets Na state the name of planet closest to sun obviously the first planet is mercury describe the distance uh, difference between a planet and a moon basically a planet would revolve around a star and a moon or a natural satellite would revolve around a planet you can also write that a uh, planet's orbit is usually very much longer than a uh, moon's orbit. A state two differences between an asteroid and a comet. Comet comes from very far away or outside the solar system or beyond Neptune. Uh, they have highly elliptical orbits and very long orbital periods. They consist of ice uh, and uh, methane and dust particles. They usually have a tail when they pass near the sun and they lose mass as they are come close to the sun and comets come in smaller range of sizes. Mostly comets are in size pretty close to each other. Whereas uh, there are many many more asteroids as compared to the number of comets we have in our solar system. Asteroids are usually made of solid rocks and minerals and metals etc. Asteroids most are mostly found between Mars and Jupiter. They also have a circular or a spherical um, orbit. They are, they are formed close to the sun. They, their orbital period is short. And these are the points which you can use. Uh, you can write any two of them. These are all the possible differences between asteroid and comets. You can write any two or three of them as per the given question. The planet closest to the sun orbits the sun in 88 days. State two reasons why Earth takes longer. First of all, uh, the planet closer to sun has this small has to cover very small distance as it has the smallest orbital distance. Plus it would be having the greatest orbital speed or average orbital speed because it is having a lot of uh, uh, sun's gravitational energy acting on it whereas earth is further away from the sun so it would have to cover a, a lot more distance to complete one revolution and it as it is further away from the sun so its uh, average orbital speed is slower than the first planet that's all you need to know for section uh, 6.1 i hope you have understood ev anything everything if you have any problem or any questions or queries do uh, write it down in the comments below i'll make sure to reply to all of your questions if you uh, were able to understand the topic do give uh, give this video a thumbs up and leave your comments below i'll see you guys in the next lecture take care allah hafiz